am Ali Ray. I am a content creator and I am a Chivette and I am at Chive Headquarters. It's like kind of like a home that I've never got to be at, but it's somewhere I feel, I feel connected. I was an ICU nurse in 2020 and uh, just doing my thing through COVID. It was kind of crazy. Um, my husband was furloughed from his job, so we weren't able to really go do anything anymore. And I started doing craft beer reviews on my Instagram. So people would talk about an OnlyFans and we didn't really know what it was. We didn't think anything of it um, until like the Bella Thorne story came out where she made like a million dollars in six hours. So we kind of like looked at each other and we're like, holy shit, like that's the platform that all of uh, our community was telling us about. And so we, we actually looked into it at that point and posted a few things on there. And before you knew it, like I kind of neglected it and put it to the side, didn't really log in and came back two weeks later and we had made a lot of money. So we kind of realized at that point, like this is kind of a real deal. Maybe we should pay attention to this. Well, I will say when I first started with the Chive, I had a, a gentleman by the name of Joe Barlow who works for the Chive, who actually slid up in the DMs. Oh, well, well. <laughs> it wasn't like that. He said that we should post you on the Chive page. And I was like, absolutely you should, that'd be great. And I was able to put my link and stuff in the bio. And the Chive community for me, like I'm a 38 year old woman, so I knew like, I'm not perfection. Like I'm, I knew I couldn't compete on that level. And so for me, what was always so great about the Chive community is always so welcoming and I can, you know, post pics or content and what have you. And I, I never felt like I had to be something I wasn't. Actually, the Chive community is like, does not want Photoshopped fake stuff. Like they're very particular and they really, really appreciate like just the average girl. And I think you can go around online everywhere, but you never find just like the down to earth looking girls that you find on the Chive. And I think that that's just because that's acceptable here. And I think that that's really, really comforting because it's such a world where you feel like you gotta have everything perfect, especially now. Um, but on the Chive, you really don't. And I think that that's like really comforting. I can just be myself. Even to this day, I think like more than half of my community has come from the Chive. So I really, really like absorbed the whole vibe of the Chive. And I think that's why, you know, I have such a, such a presence within the Chive. I, to this day, I say it on every interview, I even said it on Dr. Phil, that I would not be where I'm at without the Chive and more importantly, Joe Barlow. So type of beer that I would put on your tap. Okay, favorite beer for one, Cigar City Brewing out of Tampa, amazing. Surly Brewing out of Minneapolis, Surly Furious is a popular beer. But if I was gonna name an Austin beer, I would say I went to Independence Brewing and they had a very good IPA called Stash and I would definitely put it up there. I think people would love it. It's a traditional IPA, very clean, just a really nice beer. Well, one of the things I'm grateful for is I am really a different face to this industry. And that's something that Dr. Phil said to me is like, you know, you just represent this industry in a different way. And slowly I became kind of an advocate for this industry, which it just kind of morphed into that. But I take it seriously in that there's so much stigma against this and sexuality and everything that I hope I, hope I can help change that perception that you can still lead a very normal life, but do something very different on the side. It is definitely two different alleys and <laughs> I feel like if you live your life surrounded by what people feel and, oh, that's bad, that's wrong, you will literally be miserable. Like, just do what you wanna do. So as a nurse, I was probably making like 70 grand a year, maybe something like that. Um, our average now is roughly like 200K a month. So we're, we're making a couple million a year. For us, it's really set us up in, in many ways and our children and, and what have you, so yeah. Yeah, when I first started, I think my first couple uh, images on the site, there was no face. Um, I was terrified again because of my career and I knew like I didn't want to paint my career in any bad light. Uh, we didn't post a video of us until 
probably two or three months in where people ask and I think after the first one and seeing how just like overwhelming support there was for it, I was like, okay, let's post another. <laughs> as far as like video content, it's literally like came from home from the bar and I'm like, <laughs> today's the day, pop the tripod in or I feel cute today, we're popping it up, you know? And then there's days where it's like, no, I'm bloated today, you know, <laughs> whatever. So that's like very just natural in the moment. It just gets popped up. So I, I try to keep that very real and raw. On top of that, I mean, I'm also filming now for my show, and then I have uh, another business. I built my own platform. I have Wetspace, and so that's like something that's been keeps me busy. I'm the CEO of my own company now, so I'm I'm really morphing into a lot of different roles, which is kind of crazy. I truly credit most of my success to the Chai community. I really do. I always say like this is just such a welcoming community that it's it really set me up. Yeah, so you can find me everywhere on thealleyray.com. I have all my links there, fun stuff, and definitely check out my show, Tap That. I'm super excited about this. It's gonna be great. If you love craft beer, you will love my show. We're gonna do more than just reviews and be torn breweries. I'm gonna learn how to change a keg. I just got wind, I'm gonna learn how to change a keg. Um, lots of fun stuff coming up.